This presentation will bring in perspective the development of a procedure for damage detection in concrete uh, T girders using 3D finite element simulations trained by artificial neural networks. Uh, before I continue on, I'd like to acknowledge my co-authors, uh, Dr. Aladdin Abulail and Mr. Eric Fletcher, who both worked on this study and an extended study after uh, that. Um, the outline of the presentation will be objectives, uh, introduction, methodology. I'll talk about some results and discussions and conclude. Uh, the motivation of this study was uh, first um, to uh, try to identify or detect damage or cracking in concrete girders uh, that, that crosses uh, for, in bridges that crosses rivers, for example. So it's very difficult to inspect under, under the bridge and find out where the cracks are in order to estimate or evaluate the health uh, of these girders. Uh, the objective is to investigate uh, the potential for application of the finite element uh, method combined with artificial neural network to create a damage detection model. Uh, so basically what we do is we have, a, we have an analysis, finite element analysis uh, software for healthy uh, structures. And uh, the, we go to the field and we measure through a theodolite the actual deflections of the damaged structure. And through ratios of these, we train a neural network and, uh, and, uh, um, and then use that as a, as a detection tool. However, in this phase of the study, we don't do a field uh, calculations. We do everything by finite element simulations. So uh, the... Uh, uh, we, we construct a T girder database, we create and train and validate an artificial neural network model, and then you, we utilize the ANN to detect uh, damage. Um, the introduction will be very brief because of uh, thanks to um, uh, Henry and Emilio who introduced the concepts. Uh, uh, artificial neural networks have uh, layers, uh, the input layer, and sometimes one or more than one hidden layer where the learning happens and an output layer. Uh, the learning occurs through mathematical operations performed within the hidden layers and, uh, excuse me, and their connection to the input and output layers. Uh, in a feed forward uh, network, we don't have any connections between the, um, between the hidden layers. So everything is a single flow uh, uh, from the input towards the output layers. And it is, uh, this application uh, has supervised learning. So the outputs predicted are judged against and uh, uh, corrected against uh, actual or provided outputs from the finite element simulations. Abacus is used uh, in the, uh, uh, in the uh, study. Uh, we use 3D solid uh, structures or parts uh, to build the beam. Um, it's, a, it's a 3D uh, T girder. Uh, 10 noted the quadratic tetrahedral elements are used uh, for auto meshing technique and then reinforcement uh, using three uh, 3D wire elements uh, or truss elements are used for reinforcements and we embedded three bars into the concrete uh, beam models. Uh, here in this uh, sketch, we show that we tried to reduce the number of parameters because the number of parameters is vast. So we, we used the ACI 318 uh, formula for uh, determining the effective width of the, uh, of the flange by uh, using the 45 degree lines for two-way slabs. This is used typically for two-way slabs to determine the effective width of the, of the, uh, of the flange. Uh, we also fixed the thickness of the flange 
uh, and uh, but we vary the ratio of the thickness of the flange to the thickness to the height of the section to capture more variation. Uh, of course, everything uh, that we start with needs some validation. So convergence study, mesh and convergence study was done. Uh, we varied the uh, element sizes from 50 millimeter to 20, down to 25 millimeters. And we saw that the change in deflection was very minimal. So, uh, so we, we concluded that uh, using 50 millimeter uh, element size is sufficient. Um, here in this slide, we show, we describe the inputs and the output parameters. Uh, so we have uh, used, utilized, uh, normalized uh, parameters because we want to be able to generalize this procedure to by scaling up and down based on the uh, fact that we can change the BW that we start out with, and then hence we will change the H through the BWH ratio, and then the HS over H ratio, and then the length over the height of the beam, and then the ratio of the steel is separate. F prime C determines the material properties, and I would like to mention that uh, if uh, this analysis is linear elastic because the damage is induced in through cracks, so everything else, concrete is assumed to be healthy in between them. And then there is these uh, stiffness ratios, and I'd like to uh, express some definitions of these. We have nine stiffness nodes, and we arrived at the number nine by using uh, parametric study, and we found out that this is the optimum. And these uh, stiffness nodes are nodes where we apply a load, like 100 kilonewton, for example, and we measure the deflection at that uh, point, and by dividing the force by the deflection, we get a stiffness. And then the stiffness of the damaged beam divided by the stiffness of the healthy beam uh, makes up these K percent. And that's what I talked about being the damaged values, we get them from the field and the healthy values, we get them from analysis. The outputs on the other hand, are the uh, location of the crack uh, relative to the length of the beam and uh, the depth of the crack relative to the height of the beam, as well as the width of the crack. And these sets one, two, and three are for training, testing, and validation. So this table shows uh, uh, the, uh, this table shows uh, the parameters that we varied. So BW over H was 0 0.5, 0 0.7, and 0 0.9, L over H ratio, and rho, and F prime C was between 20 and 50 megapascals. And then the K percentages were generated from the simulations. And uh, you, you, as you can imagine, the K is gonna go down if there's a proximity to a crack and it's gonna go back up to close to one or 100% if the crack is far away from, uh, uh, from the, the node that we are considering. This, this table just shows the sigmoidal function and the minimums and the maxima uh, for the parameters input and output. Um, the artificial neural network had three best models and because of the complexity of the problem, actually the non-uniqueness of the problem, we see that uh, the best model is model three. We see that the R squared was uh, a load, was modest, 42% only. And we will discuss the specifics of that. The ASE, uh, uh, the, uh, the absolute uh, squared error uh, was 4%, uh, about 4% in this model. Uh, so uh, we, we have used 50% uh, of the test data for training, 25% of the test data for testing, and 25% of for validation, for back validation. We had uh, about 11,000 data points uh, or, or simulation results, and we actually augmented that with uh, another 31,000 results from mirroring the crack locations, depths, and, and widths. 
So uh, we ended up with 14 input nodes, 16 hidden nodes, and 15 output nodes. So it's a pretty big uh, network. And we used uh, forward, uh, uh, feed forward and supervised ANN and the learning rate was 0.01. Uh, th uh, let's just talk about the results. Uh, if you look at uh, some of the results, we noticed that in this 45 degree line, the deviation is not that bad when it comes to the location of the crack. So the network predicts the location of the crack very uh, closely. Uh, and uh, however, it fails to predict the depth of the crack versus the height of the section and the width of the crack, which are uh, ex to be expected because the variations in these 9K percentages or ratios uh, are not enough to tune uh, towards these small variables that are changing. Or in other words, we have uh, a certain set of uh, stiffnesses uh, or stiffness ratios that may end up having the same depth to height ratio versus width uh, of the crack and location of the crack as well. But the good news is that even though the, the R squared is 42% for the overall, considering all the variables, if we consider just the uh, location of the crack, we can at least be able to uh, locate the cracks in a, with a good accuracy uh, about uh, in the range of 0.7 to 0.8. Uh, we wrote a software, which is a handheld device or tablet enabled. And that software had uh, the model, the best performing model, has the inputs as ratios or as absolute values. And as I said, the ratios were used because we can scale up and down the parameters by changing the VW. And we did a sensitivity analysis to see that this doesn't impact the results uh, significantly. And we put the ratios of the Ks and we get up to five cracks. We divide the beam into five zones. Each zone has one crack that could be arbitrarily located within that zone. So we get the properties predicted for, uh, for that. And then it shows the cracks in the, in the beam as a result. Uh, in conclusion, one ANN artificial neural network was employed to predict the damage configuration of beams up to five cracks. The predicted damage parameters define the location, the depth and the width of each crack. And the ANN uh, was taking geometric and material parameters as well as nodal stiffness ratios as input and predicted the crack uh, parameters as output. We also started working on the reverse problem, uh, the forward problem. This is the inverse problem, which uh, was pretty successful in predicting the health index of the beam if we were to input the parameter, the crack parameters, and, and predict the K percentages or ratios. Uh, so, so there we have an R squares of uh, 0.98 and 0.99 and something like that. But this was the more difficult problem that we need to fine tune and refine. Upon determining optimum uh, uh, model for crack configuration, we got uh, the best uh, uh, network to predict 40% uh, R square value. However, the R square value of 40% could, could be increased if we focus on the location of the crack and accept some deviation in the depth of the crack and the width of the crack because the purpose is to uh, evaluate or identify the health of the, uh, of the beam in general by locating cracks uh, uh, in, in the right locations. With that, I will stop and open it up for questions.